Hey everyone, and welcome back. Now this is gonna be a pretty exciting lesson. We just created some wireframes and I have a, several of those wireframes here, as you can see. And we're gonna use them to actually create our first prototype. Now we're gonna get into the basics of it and how you can link together something really quick that you can test with users or you can just show to your clients or you can just show off to your team. So let's go right over here. You'll notice that when you wanna design, this is what you would click. You would click this little design tab, but if you wanna get into prototyping, you click the prototype tab. Now we are gonna be working on mobile. The first thing you wanna do is select a device. Now they have a bunch of different variations. You can even create custom sizes if you want. If I'm on mobile, I'll probably use like a phone size, depending on maybe the type of frame I'm using. So in this instance, I'm going to use the iPhone 11 Pro device. Over here, you can even like select the model, whether like that's gold, midnight green, silver, space gray, like let's just go for space gray, keep it really relaxed. And you can even like adjust the background color. You can see like a little preview of that. So there you go. I just changed it to like a very light gray over here. We can just see a preview of what that could look like. If we go to present. So this is our presentation view. So now we can see like our app is actually in here. Wow. And but like we can't click anything, so <laughs> it doesn't really work. We can like tap through it. Like if we press our arrow keys, we can like go through all the different types of options there are, but that's about it right now. So let's get out of here. So it opens up a new tab. Like we'll, I'll show you again. It just opens up a new tab right there. You can close that. You can keep it open if you want and the updates you make here will reflect in that presentation, which is also awesome. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like you can also switch the orientation if you need to. This orientation like determines which way your prototype is presented. Typically you just leave it vertical. So you can leave that like that. Your background color I mentioned, you can change it to whatever you want. I like to keep it like a little bit of contrast between that and the device. It really depends what I'm prototyping. If I'm like prototyping interaction outside of like a device just on a frame of its own, I probably may keep it like white. I don't know. It's up to you really. And another very important thing is your starting frame. So this is essentially like a frame that your prototype should start on. So I'm going to select home. That is my starting frame. So you can like set or update the starting frame from the prototype settings if you want. There we go. There's our starting frame. Woo. So you can, you can change that if you want just because I made a connection. It goes away if there's no connections, apparently. If I link it to this item, then it'll definitely stay. Okay, so let's get right into it. Triggers. Now, the trigger determines what type of interaction with like the hotspot will cause the prototype to like advance. So. I'll show you what I mean. So if I clicked on this little heart at the bottom here, this heart icon to go to the wish list page, this is the trigger, this little drop down. So there's different triggers. Right now we have on click or on tap, and that basically like when a user clicks on desktop or a user taps on mobile on the hotspot, and I'll show you what that looks like. So there's my hotspot right there. If I click that, that's what's going to happen. So let's go back to our designs. So you can use them for like navigation, opening links, using menus or exploring websites, or when you need input from a user to click on buttons, fill in forms or confirm and dismiss alerts. You also have on drag. So that allows you to perform an action when you drag an element on the screen. This can be like an entire frame or like a single element. I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to create a copy here. I'm going to remove this selection. And I'm actually going to go into my design 
and I'm going to select these. I'm going to Option Command G. I go like that. I'm going to Option Command G. I'm going to change that to frame one. So that's another option. I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to select this whole frame. I'm going to go to my prototype and I'm going to do on drag. And it'll go to this. So I'll go to this page and it should drag the element. Let's go take a look. Whoa, there you go. You can even do on drag. So that's another trigger. The next trigger on our list is while hovering. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select these. I'm actually going to make a copy of this home page and I'm going to make this fill. Let's just turn it. There we go. I think that's fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my prototype. I'm going to select this. And when I hover, I'm going to go to this page. Look at that. You can see that it is actually hovering really awesome. That's the next trigger. The other trigger we have in store. So let's delete this kind of just creating like homepage variants so we can show off all these triggers. We can have like while pressing. So triggers this action basically like you hold the mouse or trackpad on a desktop and when you tap and hold on a mobile device. So you can use this for navigating like drop down menus or replicating long press interactions, you know, like viewing a preview on iOS. When you release this, we will take the user back to the original frame. So I'll show you what that looks like. Actually, let's do something with this over here. We are just going to make that black. So when we do while pressing, we are gonna go to this page. Let's see what it looks like. I just clicked. And there you go, you have a little interaction. So really simple stuff. Let's see what else we can do here. The next one is key or gamepad. I mean, I'm not gonna go over that one right now because we're not necessarily creating a game. There's mouse enter, which basically shows the destination frame that you selected. When the mouse enters the hotspot area, this could be like a small area, like a button or like an entire section. So you can also like set up what happens afterwards. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to do something similar to what I had. Let's change this fill to like red. Ooh, that's really harsh. Let's change it to black. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go into my prototype. I'm going to select uh, mouse enter and that's gonna go here. And when I select, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do on mouse leave. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So as you can tell, like mouse enter mouse, mouse leave works perfectly. And you can create a little interaction like that. This is great for like stuff like on desktop. The same concept applies to the next two, which are like touch down and touch up. So all you need to do is like when you click and when you release or when you tap and remove the tap. So we can do the exact same thing, touch down, touch up. And if we were to preview that, so it's just gonna always default to this one. Touch down, click, touch up, gone. Touch down, click, touch up, gone. So really easy to use. The triggers are pretty awesome. Another cool thing is, let's just remove this altogether what we're going to do is we're going to create like three frames. Okay. So I'm going to connect this to this just by clicking. Maybe we'll have a state change. So we know that we're on this page. So like we'll change it to black and then 
after a delay, this is going to happen. So let's go to our prototype. It's going to go back to normal after a delay. Or you know what? We can even like shift this whole thing over after a delay. I don't know. It's just something to show you how it works. So I'm going to click the whole frame and I'm going to click after delay. And I have 800 milliseconds. And it's going to go to, it's going to navigate to home. So let me show you what that looks like. So I see my hotspot there. I'm just clicking. I click. And you saw that it changed after 800 milliseconds. So if we go back to our frame, let's do it again. Boom, gone. So those are the different types of triggers you can use within Figma. I mean, use them wisely. Don't like do what I just did there because that's kind of confusing, but you may want to use that for like, if you're building like a email notification list and like a new email pops up and you want to show what that interaction looks like, does it fade in and fade out? I mean, we can get more in detail in terms of like what that looks like in a later lesson when we get into like micro interactions. But for basic prototyping, this is just really good to just do like instant actions just to get it done quickly. You don't necessarily need to spend so much time figuring out all these triggers. I typically only use like on tap for like everything at this point because I just wanna get like a prototype linked together to test. We're gonna learn a little bit more in our next video.